so let's go and take a look at this graph. Um, and you guys have kind of, you know, a lot of the things that you guys mentioned um, in these graphs kind of already alluded to a lot of, a lot of these elements. So let's just kind of, you know, kind of now get a little bit more mathematical. Again, kind of answering them in a little bit the way that, uh, you know, I phrase them up there. So if you guys can see, the domain is really the set of all x values. And when you're looking at a graph, you know, we have, we usually set up a graph as the x and y axis, right? So the domain is basically saying, you know, how, what are all the x values that make up the graph? And in this example, um, another way of thinking about that is saying, well, basically, how far left does the graph go? How far right does the graph go? But in this example, um, we also need to understand that there's this dashed line that looks like these two graphs are approaching from the left and the right. And it doesn't seem like there's a defined value at that value, right? So this is an undefined value. So what we can do is, is we can say, well, to the left of 0 is a continuous function, right? Once you guys see like that's continuous. So let's go ahead and draw the line. Let's go ahead and draw the graph um, of, let's go and draw what that graph or the domain of this function, just like right here. So basically, how far left is it going? Well, that's going to negative infinity. And then it's going all the way to 0, or it looks like it's approaching 0. So it looks like this. Now, I have seen a lot of students writing it like this, um, which is fine. Oh, wait, 0. OK, I saw a lot of students using the inequality notation, which is cool. Or they said, or they would just say, like, x, yeah, it has to be between 0 and right, um, which is fine. I will tell you, like, if you write that on you know, a multiple choice test or, or uh, you know, free response, you know, I'm not going to mark you down with that unless I have specific directions. I will say, though, this is the preferred method of interval notation. It's basically just taking the left to the right. Now, we have this other part of the graph where you can see, well, this graph looks like it kind of starts at 0. 0 is not defined, but it goes from 0 all the way over to, and it's going to continue going to the right to infinity. Now, some people just like putting a comma between those two. All right? Mathematically, we know that these two domains are kind of like together. So if you guys remember in, set no, um, in sets, a lot of times, remember, we use the union symbol, like the or, which is like a combination of the two intervals. So you guys will see that a lot. You don't need to use the union symbol, but I don't want you to be like, what's that union symbol? Like, it just means you're, bringing those connect you're connecting those two domains. Um, the range is kind of interesting. You guys can see that there is a horizontal uh, line that the graphs are approaching from the left and to the right, but also the graphs like cross that line, right? So it's not undefined for that given value. You guys see that? It's not undefined at that line. It's approaching it, but it's not undefined, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. So the range looks like, so if the domain is basically how far left to how far right the graph goes, minus any discontinuities. The range is basically saying how low is the graph going to how high is it going. And in this case, we can say it's negative infinity to infinity. All right. Um, now, discon discontinuities is basically saying, you know, we're asking, is one, is the graph continuous? And then two, what type of discontinuity is it? All right. Um, so we can, the way to test, again, if a graph is continuous, can you draw the graph without lifting up your pencil? And I can't because I have to somehow cross this asymptote, so I have to go over there. So it's definitely discon discontinuous, uh, but now we want to be able to identify the discontinuity. And I guess I didn't. I think I'm supposed to play, so I got room here. So there's a couple different types of discontinuities. There are removable and non-removable. Okay, If it's a removable, it's a whole. All right? And that basically means it's like a vacant portion of the graph. Right? You're looking at the graph, and there's just like a vacant dot. Um, Non-removable would be a jump or a vertical asymptote. So a jump is basically going from one part of the function jumping to another part of the function, or two different functions, like a piecewise function. You're jumping from one function to the next. Whereas a horizontal asymptote, a lot of people say, oh, well, you're jumping. Yes. But remember, the horizontal asymptote is an undefined value where the graph is approaching. All right? And notice I'm talking about vertical asymptotes. I didn't say horizontal asymptotes because, we're, one, we're looking for discontinuities of the domain. And second, horizontal asymptotes can cross. This is an example of a graph that crosses the horizontal asymptote. 
Okay, horizontal asymptotes are not discontinuities, but vertical asymptotes are. So this is, since it's a vertical asymptote, we could say that it's a non-removable, non-removable vertical asymptote. And the best thing to do when you're, a lot of times when I'm asking you about discontinuities, I might say, where does that discontinuity exist? Where is that discontinuity? And therefore, you'd have to say, well, it exists at x equals 0. Right? Because when at x equals 0, that's where the graph is broken up. Okay. Now, I didn't list these points, so let's go ahead and do that. 2, 3, 2, negative 3. OK, increasing, decreasing, constant. This one gets a lot of students. And I don't think any group did any increasing, decreasing up here, did they? Not one poop. Huh? I need to get you guys. All right, so increasing, decreasing, constant is basically asking us, when is the graph? Again, I'm, I'll say it one more time. When is the graph increasing, decreasing, or constant? So now what we need to do is we need to put our hats back, like our thinking hats, as far as looking at a graph. As we read a graph from left to right, the x values is basically like this, x is basically telling us the when, and the y is basically telling us like the what, right? Here's like you're traveling, and you know, the easy example I think of was like, let's say here's time, and like say, let's say here's speed, okay? And let's say here's 65 miles per hour. You Start at zero, you get in your car, you drive to the highway at a constant acceleration to get to 65 miles per hour, and then now you're on the highway and you, and you put on cruise, cruise control and you stay at 65 miles per hour. And if I say when were you increasing your speed, you would say, well, you increased your speed from zero to five minutes. Wouldn't you guys agree? If I, you wouldn't say, oh, I increased me, my speed from zero to 65. No, when did you increase your speed? from 0 to 5. The win is the x values. Does that make sense? Not the y values. The y values is telling you what the speed. And that's different because I can phrase my question differently. So if I'm asking you for the increase, I'm basically saying, when is the graph increasing? When? So we look at this and we say, well, starting from the farthest left, as we go from like negative infinity all the way to negative 2, the graph is increasing. Am I asking how much is the graph increasing? No. So we can say the graph is increasing on the interval negative infinity to negative 2. Okay? Increasing, decreasing intervals are intervals. They're not coordinate points. A lot of students will like mix them up and they'll like, oh, it's a coordinate point. No. Don't say like it's increasing from negative infinity to negative 2, 3. That's a coordinate point. So these are intervals of increasing. You guys can also see from the interval 2 to infinity that the graph is increasing. And then we can say the graph is decreasing on the interval negative 2 to 0. And on the interval 0 to 2. Now, let me reiterate a couple points here. What's wrong with me saying from negative 2 to 2 that the graph is decreasing? Because de it's decreasing here and it's decreasing there. So what's wrong with me saying just it's decreasing from negative 2 to 2? Because what? They're not yeah, they're not connected. So if you say it's decreasing on the interval negative 2 to 2, wouldn't you then assume then at 0 the graph is decreasing? Right? If you say on the interval negative 2 to 2 the graph is decreasing, that tells me that 0 the graph is decreasing, right? But 0 is undefined. So that's why we want to, that's why we have to separate that out. Um, the other thing is, why don't I use a, why don't I use an included symbol here? If negative 2 is a, is a point, right, why don't I use the bracket instead of the parentheses? Anybody have an idea? That's okay. So the reason why, it, when we're talking about, because like in domain and range, if a point is included, See, so like the asymptote, it's not included because 0 is not a point, so that's why it's parentheses. Infinity is not a number, so that's why it's a parentheses. Um, but when a point is included, then we do, want to, um, in, we do want to include them. And I guess I forgot to mention that on there. So just remember, guys, if a point is on the graph, you want to use brackets for domain range. 
But for increasing, decreasing, we don't want to really use that because look at the point negative 2. At the x value negative 2, if you use a bracket, that means negative 2 is increasing or is negative 2 decreasing. Which one is it? It's not, you can't like be both, right? You can't be like increasing and decreasing at the same time. So that's why when we're talking about increasing, decreasing intervals, we're always just using parentheses. All right? And just real quick, guys, I, um, let me, uh, like for instance, like if I looked at, if I was going to say what is like the domain of this, see how 0 is included, or um, negative 1 is included? So the domain of this one would be negative 1 to infinity. Do you guys see why, like why I'm using that? However, if it's like an open circle, Hold on a second, juniors. I'll finish. OK, so just notice the difference, guys. If it's included, you're going to use brackets. If it's not included, like as a whole, or if it's an asymptote in our case, that's why we're using the parentheses. And this is for domain and range. I forgot to go talk about that, so that's why I'm going back to it. OK? Um, juniors, if you'll just wait, I'll, almost, I'll finish this up real quick, because I have something I want to tell you as well. Um, all right, let's talk about extrema. Extrema is basically saying like the highs and the lows of the graph. OK? So basically, is there a point that is a like a maximum or a minimum. And if you guys look at this, um, you can see that this graph continues going up and it continues going down. So there's never going to be a point that's always going to be the highest, right? Would you guys agree? However, if you were to take like a camera and like zoom in on this graph, and let's say you just zoomed in right here. So on your zoomed in lens, all you see is this. Is there now a maximum point? Yes, right? So, but that's relative to like what you're looking at, right? Because if you zoom all the way out and look at the grand scheme of the graph, then it's not a maximum. But if when you zoom in relative to what you're looking at, you guys can see that it's a maximum. And a definition of a maximum, the reason why you guys are saying, yeah, it's a maximum, the definition of a maximum point is every point to the left and every point to the right is going to be below. The definition of a minimum point is every point to the left and every point to the right is going to be above, right? Um, juniors, actually, by the way, I'll just let you guys go because this is going to take a little bit longer. Um, just make sure you guys have the homework and then obviously get the notes which you need. Okay. Um, all right. So therefore, this is the maximum. But it's not the highest absolute maximum. It's what we call a relative maximum. So we'd say a relative max. Now, could we talk about location as well as values? Could we say that there is a, um, a relative max? Um, at x equals negative 2? Like, would that tell you where the maximum value is? Yes. And, but couldn't we also say there is a maximum value of, like, y equals 3? Right? So the only reason I want to bring that up is, you know, guys, the, the, um, how things are asked matters. And just be careful with that. For instance, like on multiple choice or else, I might, you know, you might be asked, where is the extrema? Or what is the value of the extrema? So just make sure you know the difference between what x's tells you and what y's tells you. We can also just say there's a relative max at the coordinate point, negative 2, 3. And using that same understanding, if I was just going to zoom in here, we would say that's a relative min. And I'll just say at the coordinate point, 2, comma, negative 3. Now, what if this graph stopped? Let's just say the graph stopped right now. Is this now the lowest point of the whole graph? Yes. yes. So when we're talking about extrema, there's, at, there's relative min and max, which are just min and maxes of like a zoomed in portion. And there's also absolute. And what absolute means is it's the absolute lowest or the absolute highest. OK? So we don't have any in this case, but I wanted to at least talk to you guys about that. All right, now the rest of them should be rather quickly. Uh, boundness. So boundness is just really another way to say, like, how is the graph restricted? So if you guys can see that this graph 
is continuing going up and continuing going down, right? So boundness, we're talking about basically like how is the range bounded? We're not talking about the domain. We're really kind of talking about the range. Is there any restrictions in the range? And is there any restrictions on how low or how high we're going? No. And not so much restrictions as like gaps, I guess you're saying. We're looking at the kind of like, yeah, the uh, maximum or minimum values. So this graph is unbounded. And you might say, well, then what is an example of a bounded function? That is an example of a bounded function. Because you guys see the quadratic. The quadratic has an absolute minimum value, right? What we call the vertex here. Yes, you guys remember that? Algebra 2. Oh, sweet thing. So that is what we call bounded, and it's restricted. You can't go below that lowest absolute minimum point, right? So that is what, this is what we call bounded below. And if I flipped it so it looked like this, that would be called bounded above because it's restricted above that vertex. Does that make sense? And if it didn't continue, like it looked something like this, we would just say it's bounded above and below or just bounded because it's restricted on the top and the bottom. Yes? If it's horizontal. If it's horizontal. Well, it wouldn't be a function. So we probably wouldn't be characterizing it. But again, it depends on the function. Like, like if you're looking at it like this, is this graph continue going up and continue going down? Yeah, so technically it's unbounded, right? As long as, it as long as there's no restrictions on how high or how low it can go, it'd be unbounded. But for our sake of this chapter, we're only going to talk about functions, so they'd all pass the vertical line test. Um, but th in this example, you guys can see there's no restrictions, so it's unbounded. The next thing is kind of M behavior. So M behavior is basically detailing where is the graph going. So as we move to the right, is the graph going up, down, or is it approaching a number? As we move to the left, as we read the graph to the left, is the graph going up, down, or approaching a number? And you guys can see that the graph is not continuing up to infinity or down to negative infinity. It's actually approaching a number, right? Yes? And we'll learn a more mathematical approach here for right now. Oops, I won. In this case, we'll just talk about m behavior is going to be um, the graph approaches um, approaches y equals 0 from the left and right. Okay, When we're talking about m behavior, we're looking at, you know, basically as the graph expands, where is it going? Okay, and we're looking at the y values, the output values, or more commonly often used as the f of x values, which is the same thing as the y's. But we're basically looking at m behavior. Where is the graph going? Is it going up to infinity, down to negative infinity, or is it approaching a number? So that's why I included the left and the right. x and y intercepts, you know, guys, we can just see that there are two x intercepts. You can write the x intercepts as values, so you could say x equals negative 1 or 1. Or we could also write them as coordinate points. And I prefer writing them as coordinate points. Yes? For the end behavior, do you have to do like how you said y equals 0, how the arrows are going to y equals 0? What about the other arrows? Do you have to include them? So no, what we're saying is like as we as we read this graph from the left and right, so just like walk, pretend it's like a roller coaster. So do 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 do. So as I continue going to the right, where am I going? Am I shooting up to infinity, shooting down to negative infinity, or am I approaching a number? You're approaching zero. So as like so as I read to the left, hop over. Again, I'm approaching zero. So we're yeah when we're look, talking about like end behavior, we're looking at the expansion going left and right. Where, is you, where are you going? Okay. Um, and basically, another way of like, thinking about that is like, you know, again, here's your frame of reference. If you zoom out even further, where is this graph going to be as you, as you continue looking to the right or as you continue looking to the left? Right? So that's kind of what end behavior is representing. Um, I like writing x and y intercepts, though, just because it re. re reinforces the idea that y is equal to 0 when the x-intercepts. If there was a y-intercept, x would equal 0. 
Okay, so I just like writing the coordinate points because it reinforces this idea, which is extremely important next chapter, that the x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. And then last but not least is even and odd. And even and odd is basically looking at symmetry for this chapter. Okay, so the easy way to look at this, guys, is this function is even. The reason why it's even is because it's symmetrical about the y-axis. So if you have a function that is symmetrical about the y-axis, it's even. We'll talk more about why that matters later. If the function is symmetrical about the origin, it's odd. Symmetrical about the origin basically takes this function, flips it about the y, and flips it about the x. And if you can do that, flip about the y and the x, you can see it's odd. This example, is the, is the right side the same thing as the left side? No, right? So therefore, this is not even. However, you got to kind of be a little creative here. If I flip this about the y-axis and then flip it about the x-axis, do I get the exact same graph? Yes. So this is an example of an odd function. Okay.